first. Nothing we can talk about. Great, well, welcome. So nice to have you guys Thank here. Thank you. Wonderful well, to be in Cleveland. Absolutely. <laughs> you didn't mean that. The steel curtain around here. Would you like to say a few words? Get right to the questions, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, it's great to see you all here. Yes, thank you very much for coming out. Let's, let's jump into some questions. Because these guys have been uh, right there, right down from. Uh, this question is for Anthony Michael Hall. Uh, what was it like playing Bill Gates and working with Noah Wiley on Pirates of Silicon Valley? Uh, uh, you know, it was a real, it was a real privilege. I was honored to get that part. And, uh, I basically just tried to read everything I could about him. There were a bunch of biographies about Mr. Gates. And I just tried to get as well versed as I could. And Noah's a great guy, a lot of fun to work with. Yeah, he really looked like Steve. You know? I did the nice promo right at the last. Day. All right, and over there. Hi. I have a question for you, actually. Um, when you were in vacation, the scene with, um, I can't even say it, with Chevy Chase in the car where he loses his, his nuts, and he says, uh, he says, well, <laughs> <laughs> where he where he just goes off the deep end and we're, we're going to need plastic surgery to move our GD smiles. Right. How many times did you have to do that scene? I just remember laughing because Chevy would add a little bit. Like, I don't remember how many times. It was like 34 years ago, but I think yeah. probably a couple. You know, I, mean, we put, <laughs> Harold Ramis, I just remember a lot of laughs on the set. He was very similar to John. He was the same way. He was right there with you, kind of sitting right behind the camera, literally. And uh, he would kind of just encourage you right, right through the whole experience. You're really great. Well, thank you. Aww. Let's keep them going. Yeah, who else? I know we have quite a few, so let's bust through back there. Yeah, yeah, stand up right there. Um, I have a question for all three of you. Uh, I, was, I was wondering, uh, what was it like working for the great John Hughes? extraordinary talent. He was one of the kids. He never had his shoelaces tied up. He started a trend on the set. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. Just, there's no one like him and there will never be any films like he's made. Sure. I mean, you worked with him on how many films? I think the thing that I stuck out, I just, the thing that stuck out to me is that he was <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's there's a thing, there's a kind of structure to this film where everybody kind of winds up being better off in the end. That's how people should be about redemption. So I think that's important. The comedy is particularly lean and feeling better to show it up. He was just brilliant. He really was a part of saying it was awesome. Well, he understood um, sort of relationships and how families work and don't work. And just with the, one of the, the grandmother smoking and ash going into the thing, that actually used to happen. <laughs> Uh, it was it was a great honor to work with him, and I think we all miss him. Um, yeah, and he was uh, he was just really committed. I felt like I learned a lot on that set, not just from my fellow actors, but um, especially from him. Um, you learned how to kiss, <laughs> <laughs> Kelly. You know I already knew how to kiss. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I remember one time that the, the whole kitchen was blue, and we were hanging out, and, um, and he was talking to us about the thing, and like nonchalantly, he reached over and grabbed a potato chip, this blue potato chip, and like we all knew, it was spray painted, and he just like popped in his mouth and ate it and kept on going, and I was just like, ah, what? And, and, then, like, and then after like he was done talking, I was like, wasn't that like painted? Like, didn't that taste horrible? He, and he looked very serious, and he said, anything for a while. That was, that was really impressive. Yeah, it's great. Okay, let's get these going. Back there. If you have a question, stand up. If you can move a little bit to the middle of the aisle, that would be great. You're going to get in shape doing this. 
Um, this one's for Kelly. Which one was the worst behaved? Me. <laughs> Keep them going. Keep your hands up as soon as you hear a question. And we'll get right to you next. Actually, Downey Jr. <laughs> okay. Hi, um, Mr. Hall, thank you. Well, all three of you for being here. Uh, Mr. Hall, I wanted to know uh, who was your favorite person to uh, work with on the Dead Zone and uh, what it was that like working with uh, David Ogden Styers in particular? Too much fun last night. Didn't yeah, we did. Then we played. Those of you that saw us, so so on Dead Zone, yeah, there were a lot of great. I was really particularly. Kelly was the older actor. Easy. Um, like I worked with a great actor. Lou, what's his name? Uh, Lou Grant. So we have an opportunity to work with someone who's really been around a long time. I really enjoyed it. Next, let's do this. Yeah. Keep it going. Wait right back there. We got a Ghostbuster back. Yeah, buddy. We got someone right here, and this person's this closer person's to me. Let's do that. Uh, well, hello. First thing I'd like to ask is actually for each of you. Um, during the filming of the Weird Science movie, was there any particular scene? Sir, could you stand up? We all want to see that hat. That's a really cool hat. <laughs> I like that hat, dude. That's a slick hat. Okay, now the question, I'm sorry. Well, I'm glad you like the hat. I never take it off. Very cool. Um, I sleep in my suit, but I wear it. Great. Well, I have a question for all three of you. Uh, during the filming of the Weird Science movie, was there any particular scene that you um, had trouble filming? Or, yes. Um, <laughs> was there any particular thing about the scene that you enjoyed or disliked the most? The shower scene. <laughs> These boys could not keep it together. <laughs> and I was looking pretty goofy because I wanted to save my breasts and whatever because if you don't cover yourself up, you end up on film in a way that you don't want to be seen. So I had Polish military underwear on and band-aids across my you know what. <laughs> Somehow that worked for me. <laughs> And we had to pretend we weren't noticing. And the color, there was a, a little sea breeze commercials back in the day. Shit, there's Kelly for one thing, you stop making it. They wouldn't stop giggling, so it took a little longer than it should have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We got kids in the audience. Next question. Rocket. Question right here? Yeah, definitely show. I have a couple of questions. Um, what do you find is the most difficult about your craft, and what future projects do you consider? Uh, I'll go first because this won't take a lot of I, <laughs> I, I quit acting about 25 years ago, so I don't really have any uh, projects that will be coming up, at least not um, in terms of acting. But I do remember my time acting. I think the business has just really changed and I miss the way that we used to work, which I think means that we had more time, we had more quality with each other, and there was better writing. There's very little good writing, and I'm just glad that I did what I did. Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> um, Can you get closer to the mic? Mike, get closer to the mic. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm very proud of a couple of films that I did this year. It was, I was very blessed. I had a good year. Uh, I did a film called Warm Sheet. It was 
Brad Pitt will be out next year. We have Netflix and also in the theaters. Yeah. Yeah. And then, well, you haven't seen it yet. Good stuff. I don't know. Uh, no, I hope it's good. I think it'll be great. I hope. Um, and then I did another film with Ben Affleck. It was a great experience. And it's called Live By Night. It's a 1920s uh, gangster flick, and I play a bootlegger. So I went from playing a, a general opposite Mr. Pitt, which is awesome, to a bootlegger. And we never know what's next for us. We're like Carney. You know? <laughs> but it's a lot. It's a real privilege to, to do this. And, you know, we love it. It's a real gift. And the audience is who's in charge. So without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. A question for you right here. What would be your favorite role that you ever played? Poisson. <laughs> I, I, get, I get that. <laughs> Probably Gary in Weird Science. We got the hang with him. Well, that was a that was a fun set. Uh, I think that was probably the most fun set that I ever worked on. So, um, so I think probably playing White was my favorite. And also, I I think um, I was probably the nerdiest person on the set. And I felt like uh, you know I learned a lot from Mike at the time, and we went to high school together also. But he was pretty cool. Like I remember thinking, wow, like people like him, and he's got like girlfriends and. Um, and I was super nerdy. I wanted to play D D all the time. I collected comic books, like, and I still have. <laughs> so uh, I think. Who's Are you okay with it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and so there are characters that, that I played in some other movies that I thought were cooler than I was, but I think uh, why it reflected me a lot, and in some ways, um, I, I really was that character. Oh, wait, you get on my face. Do you consider doing another weird size? Well, they're, they're doing one, but without us. <laughs> what? <laughs> so don't go. <laughs> Ageism in Hollywood. Yeah. Oh, right? And they won't even give us a cameo. Oh. Uh, 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 the same reaction to Universal. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know how two middle-aged guys would fare, but we can Well, you it. come out and help me with my kid. You look great. I look great. Look at me. I look like Anderson Cooper over here. I'm all pushing 50. <laughs> I have, a, I have a friend named um, Adam Goldberg who has a show called The Goldberg. And he's also a huge nerd. Um, and uh, uh, he told me that at one point there was a chance, I think it didn't work out, but there was a chance that he was going to be involved with the weird science too. And his idea was that Gary and Wyatt had grown up and their daughters find their old stuff and then they make Channing Tatum. <laughs> which, which would be the perfect weird science to it. Question for you right over here. Uh, well, if there's not uh, two personal, that's why you left Hollywood? Uh, it's not too personal. I just don't know that it's that exciting, man. Like, I wish that there was some story, you know? But, um, so I'm super nerdy, uh, and I loved acting, and I loved the people that I worked with, but um, when I entered my early 20s and it started looking like a career, um, I, um, I also always loved reading about medieval stuff. Like the Middle Ages, I loved history and archaeology and especially stories. And so, like on a whim, um, I didn't graduate high school, and I was never good at high school when I was in it. But on a whim, I took a um, junior college class, and it turned out that I wasn't that bad at. It. And so, um, so in the end, uh, I just liked being in, in school and the idea of being an academic more than being an actor. And so that's what I did. Another question for you right over here. This is for Anthony Michael Hall. Um, just a quick question about The Breakfast Club. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. I was just curious. Um, I heard that the scene where you guys are all talking about why you're in detention, I heard that that was unscripted. And um, I was just wondering if you drew from anything in your personal experience in your life with the uh, elephant lamp, anything like that. 
Wait, so what part? Was it scripted? I forgot. The um the part where you all explain why you're in detention. Right. Because you've probably never been in detention. Oh, well, I, I do remember that being in the script, but maybe the, the thing with John was that Kelly and Milan were the testers. Okay, I can hear you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk up. <laughs> the things about the scripts that they were always so great. We would always love reading them. They were always funny things for all of us to do. And we were, you know, well distributed the whole thing. But when you're on the set with John, it was great because he would always kind of pull things out of you. So he would allow us to improvise if he had an idea. He would say, "Yeah, try that." And he was always totally cool like that. And I also, I really feel like that was one of his great talents too. He was never uptight about the script. He always would become something more. What? And that's what I have to say. <laughs> What's, uh, what's the best bit of advice that John ever gave you regarding your characters? <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> I don't remember what his advice was for him. He was just so right there. In that era, when we started out in the 80s, it was long before like video and now Everybody's at the monitors, you know. And John would really just sit, he would stand or sit right next to the camera. He would kind of just talk us through it all. Um, so that ability to just kind of allow things to, to develop and make it better, he gave that to all of us. And I think that was a great talent too, to empower people to try things. So he was a great coach in a way too. So that would be awesome. Thanks. Talk right here, sir. What's going on? Science going on here. <laughs> All right, another question for you right over here. Um, yeah, we were all lucky enough to grow up with you guys, to you know, feel what it felt like to be nerdy and everything. Do you ever feel like you missed out on growing up and having a, a normal childhood? Who says we grew up? <laughs> you could waste it on the young. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I think that's the case too. Like, um, being a working child is always a mixed bag, and I think you'll find that anybody saying that. Um, and so every once in a while, like, I think it occurs to people who grew up that thing, like, what would it have been like if we went to a normal high school or something like that? But I have a son and a daughter in normal high school, and it doesn't actually sound that great. <laughs> Another question for you right here. Uh, the one thing that sticks out in my mind uh, is the school practice. Chad, according to the church. Yeah. Okay, so what was it like filming that, that particular uh, scene? Every time I see that, it's just, it's pretty funny. Which student? Where, where Chad was a uh, green, where you like, pile of, in, yeah. You turned into a big poop emoji? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny, yeah. I, I, <laughs> there was two little people. Really? Yeah, we're fine. Yeah, moving yeah. the insides and the eyes and everything, and it wasn't working very well. In those days, it was a little tricky. Right. Yeah, I, I, I think that it was really interesting seeing the way that worked, and of course, like it, um, it was super funny. But, um, but I don't remember that being distractingly funny. I remember him being distracting. Yeah. <laughs> All the time, like a lot of scenes where I just thought that he was so funny that I couldn't do it. You know. Um, but that. Uh, that green uh, kind of model was just interesting and, and neat. Another question for you right back here. Hi, um, did you guys take anything like memorable from the set or anything? And can we talk more like Ringwald? Ringwald? We can talk about. <laughs> Are those her underwear? Like we all want to know. Are those really Molly Ringwald's underwear? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 the ones in the bathroom. There they are now. They're <laughs> looking for Molly's shorts, and there they are. Ma'am, could you hold those underwear up? They won't be available to Victoria's Secret later, folks. Let's throw them up there again. Come on. Throw them up. Come on. Let's see those blue undies. Very nice. 
Her husband is mortified. <laughs> Thank you for all pink ones. Wait a minute, we're on a roll. Anybody else got underwear while we're here? I know we're all wearing underwear, or some of us. <laughs> Thank you for that. Got time for about three more, four more questions. Yeah, yeah. Okay, question right here. How excited were y'all to find out you were working with Kelly on the scene on the set? <laughs> Actually, there was another Kelly before me on the set, and I came in uh, after it had been filming for three weeks because I was in the south of France. Um, Postback writing was staying, and I didn't really feel like working, so I said. And we can all relate to that, right? We're all, you know, when I find myself horseback riding in the south of France, it's and I call home to work. <laughs> and in the eighties, that's what we called it, horseback riding. <laughs> <laughs> Question for I think you. actually it was more, I was more nervous being on the set because I'd only done one film and I was working with Anthony and he's such a big talent. And to go into a film that had already been filming for three weeks and have to wear the other actresses' costumes. That's how close uh, it was to not being able to be prepared. So it was pretty intense for me on my first film. And the first thing I had to do was kiss him, so I slapped him right off. <laughs> and and somehow that worked for me. <laughs> Dungeon slaps the dragons. Okay, great. Another question right here. Right, right here. Right there. One of my favorite scenes from the movie is when Kelly and you meet Gary's parents? Oh, yeah. How, hard, that scene. how hard was that to film that scene? I never just it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole time. I mean, to deliver a line like that was so great. Have you ever thought how sad it is your son's only sexual outlet is tossing off the magazines in the bathroom? <laughs> Pull a gun, and it all seems real and normal, right? And the face on the way that played my mother was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Chips, dips, dates, whips. Money. Two more questions. You got it. We got one, one right here, and one right there. Mike, uh, Anthony, Michael, this is Bill. Yes, uh, we all know that you were a bit of a smaller guy growing up. Was there anybody you ever ran into? You turned out to be a complete potty, by the way. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was being a wise guy. What'd you say? I said you turned out to be a complete potty, by the way, so you know. Um, <laughs> was, there, was there anybody you ever like that was like pushed you around as a smaller kid that you grew up and bumped into them and went, now what are you doing? I just had to carry Farmer Ted around, so I said, like, oh, I better start hitting the gym. No, I actually, thank you for that. I appreciate it. It was nothing planned. I just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And last question. Last question right here for you. I don't really have a question. I just wanted to say is that my mom used to watch you guys when she was younger. So when I got older, she showed me all of your movies. And thank you, honey. I, I feel 118 years old. <laughs> But I just wanted to say thank you guys for being great at what you do. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so much. Thank you guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. We're going to be headed back to the table. We're going to be headed back to the table because we didn't have a chance to ask for a question. Please take it up. One more time. Let's hear it for him. Thank you. 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 We're going to Steel City Con. One more time, let's say exit! Thank you. And once again, we didn't get a chance to have...